Hello and welcome to Authentic Aesthetics, brought to you by Sinclair Pharma. The podcast where I, Connor Morin, and expert guests attempt to cut, snip and tuck the aesthetic world into bite-sized information with an injection of humour. If you want to know about fillers, non-invasive treatments or even the duck face, you're in the right place with the right people. We will dispel the myths, share our personal advice and provide the facts which everyone should know before they begin their aesthetic adventure. I'm over the moon to say that joining me today is Dr. Leah Totten. Dr. Leah is a Northern Irish practicing physician and entrepreneur. Dr. Leah rose to fame after winning the 2013 series of BBC One's The Apprentice. Today, she focuses her time on her clinics, Dr. Leah Clinics, which is co-owned by Lord Alan Sugar. Dr. Leah Clinics has expanded and operates branches in London and Essex. When not at the clinic, she is a vocal advocate for improved ethics and integrity in the cosmetic treatment industry. Dr. Leah, fantastic to have you. How are you doing today? Hi, I'm doing great. Thanks. Busy. How are you? Yeah, very well. Thank you for asking. Uh, how's your morning been? Been busy? Yeah, it's been nice. It's sunny outside, so I had a nice commute in. With Dr. Leah's expertise, we're going to dive into facelifts and more specifically, thread lifting treatments. Thread lifting treatments have grabbed the attention of some of the world's most elite circles as it produces a natural looking facelift that is a far cry from some of the unsubtle injections of the past. Interested? Good. Let's dive right into this now. So what do we know? Facelifting goes all the way back to the early 1900s when German surgeon Erich Lexer performed what was said to be the first ever facelift. People had attempted before, but none of their work was as visually pleasing or long-lasting as Lex's. People followed his technique for nearly 60 years, but it was criticised as giving people a windswept look, with almost pixie ears as the skin around the face had been pulled and tightened so much. However, thanks to the work of many other surgeons across the years and the popularity of the treatment, there have been huge improvements of the way we can facelift. So, Leah, you're a trusted and experienced doctor in this field. How would you describe thread lifting to a patient who is just starting out their aesthetic journey? A lot of the patients that I see are people who know a little bit about what they want to achieve, but aren't really sure how to achieve it. So it'll be someone who just feels the face is coming down a bit. It's feeling a little bit jolly. They're looking a bit sad. So the mouth corners start to just turn down and they just want that subtle lift, that natural looking enhancement. And, you know, they, they don't really want necessarily to radically change how they look. They don't want to necessarily look windswept um mm. or the look that a surgical facelift can give so for them threads is the is the obvious choice and just from looking at this this apparently used to be more of a an affluent i guess treatment now it's really grown in popularity what would you say are some of the main factors for the popularity rise there's been a massive shift in the stigma attached with cosmetic treatments in general. I mean, I think back to when I won The Apprentice, which was just seven years ago, there was a massive outcry in the tabloid press at that time that a prominent businessman such as Alan Sugar had got involved in the sort of Botox and, and filler industry. I think that now seems strange given how mainstream Botox and dermal filler now is. And I think there's also been in that time not only a decreased stigma around all cosmetic treatments, but a move away from the sort of days of surgical enhancement and that very dawn look of the late 90s, early 2000s into, you know, people less is more mm. in that people don't really want to look radically different. They just want to freshen up. There's a lot more emphasis on prevention now rather than cure. And threads are a fantastic alternative to an invasive and dramatic looking surgical facelift. And I think that's why they have rose in popularity and that's supported by the figures that we have. We know that the surgical industry has plateaued and regressed for some areas of the body in the last decade and the non-surgical, less invasive, more affordable option has risen in, in popularity and and that's to do with the patient's desire in terms of an expectation of the treatment, but more so the cosmetic outcome that they want, which is now a more subtle look. And and I, as a woman myself, you know, I'm, I'm completely on board with that. I personally 
you know, would want to sustain how I look for mm. as long as I can rather than radically change sure. um, how I look. And I think a lot of women feel the same. And you were talking then about the differences and the alternatives. I am someone who's very naive to this world and I'm, I'm hoping that I can learn with the listener as we go along. Could you talk about some of the main differences between facelifting and thread lifting treatments, please? Yeah, so a thread lift is a form of non-surgical lift for the face. So it's minimally invasive. It takes me about 20 to 30 minutes to perform. It's performed, it needs to be in a CQC, so in a, in a healthcare environment. But it's not anywhere near, you're awake throughout, it's not anywhere near as invasive mm. as, as a facelift. You would have some numbing cream applied to the face, just a cream, sort of magic cream that you get as a kid if you have to give blood or anything. <laughs> um, so you won't feel very much at all. Then you'll have a few injections similar to having a fill in it. It's local anesthetic. And then after that, you don't feel much at all. It takes 20 minutes. We pop some sutures in and afterwards you will look like you've had something done. And I, I would suggest taking about three to four days, maybe five, if you're very conscious of people not, you know, having any suspicion you've anything done at all out of sort of sight, if you like. And your results will last about 18 months. So you're awake throughout. You're in the clinic maybe an hour um, just over on the day. Your recovery is three, three to five days, depending on the amount of threads that you've got. The difference in that versus a sort of surgical facelift, your barn door full facelift is enormous. So you're talking about, depending on who your surgeon is, the price point is going to be five to seven times more than a thread lift. You're going to be looking at potentially an overnight hospital stay, maybe two days again, depending on surgeon. And a general anaesthetic, which in and itself has risks involved and a really substantial recovery time. Now, I'm not against sur cosmetic surgery. I'm actually not at all. And I see clients every day who are not candidates for thread lift. So in that they've too much facial laxity and the only option at that point, they've missed the sort of window, if you like, for thread lift. I'm very, very honest and will suggest that a thread lift is not suitable for them and they should seek the opinion of a surgeon and I think that it's your own decision if you want to undergo cosmetic surgery as I've said I'm really really not against it um, and it's everyone's personal choice but I think where there is a less invasive safer alternative available then we should be able to offer that to men or women who do want to improve their aesthetic appearance but want to minimize their risk in doing so and I think that's where that's where threads just fits in perfectly when you want to improve things but you're not quite ready for either the financial cost the risk factor or the the dramatic result that you can get from a surgical facelift. Are there typical motivations for people wanting this? The reason behind and the motivation for women to have thread lifts differs between practice to be honest so in the city a lot of it to be honest it's professional women typically presenting 45 to 55 who find themselves potentially being overlooked in the workplace because they're seen as a depreciating asset if you like you know they want their face to represent the energy and enthusiasm that they feel mm. um so that's a big factor in in that clinic and that makes me really First of all, sad as a, a woman in business myself. And, you know, it makes me sad that that is the case. And that is overwhelmingly females who present. Other factors are are simply people who just feel that they their face doesn't represent how they feel. So often with age, if you if the, the malar fat pad, so the, the fat pad in the middle of your cheek descends inferior immediately, it comes downwards and inwards and it makes you look it pulls down the sort of the face and you look tired when you don't feel tired you can look sad you've got sort of pulled down mouth corners and you just don't the face doesn't represent how you feel and I have so many women come in and say I look sad I'm being asked am I unhappy am I miserable I don't look like me anymore so that's a that is a really really common time for people to present that's normally about 45 to 50 and the other thing is life events so it can be positive or negative so obviously divorce rate is incredibly high mm. um in the uk and there's a lot of people who are coming back on to the dating market you know around the age of 50 and there's also a lot of people in more happy circumstances who are mom of brides and they want to look really great mm. um for their child's big day so Life events is another common reason for people to present requesting a thread lift. And the other is menopause. The average age that my clients present for thread lift consultation is the same as the average age of menopause. So just under 51. So it's 50 and 10 months. 
And that is really interesting that that is the same as when women go through their menopause and often what the conversation will be. I think I looked fine up until I was about <laughs> 49 and then I just feel over the past 18 months, everything's just completely went down. Uh. Um, and that's sort of that's quite a scary thing to feel like your appearance is changing before your eyes. I think it's really empowering to be able as a woman to take control of your aging process and to be able to to improve how you look and to bring your aging process in line with how you feel. There's so much information out there and people, as you say, talk and they spread information and stuff. Are there any common misunderstandings or or any questions which you're commonly asked by people coming in for consultations where you think, how have you got that which you feel would be good to address right now? Is there anything yeah. which sticks out? Botox, you can't have Botox in your lips if okay. one more person comes and asks for Botox in their lips or lower face. So Botox works in your upper face. You can use it for symmetry and for various things in lower face, but normally it's dermal filler that you use in your, from your eye down and Botox is from side of your eyes upwards. So that is a really common misconception. Although patient education has actually improved a lot in aesthetics over the past five years. So mm. I get asked that less and less. But about threads specifically, the main fear of patients is looking overdone. And actually, your biggest complaint after threads is the subtlety of the result. So it is if you want to look radically different, and this is why I have a threshold for who I will and won't treat. And if there's too much laxity there, I will say you need to do combination treatments. So you need to you need to have threads along with either a collagen stimulator, be it a lance or all therapy. And you also probably are going to need some form of facial tightening treatment after in the form of radio frequency or you need to go and have a consultation with a plastic surgeon and consider going down a surgical option but worrying about how dramatic a thread lift's going to be don't worry about it that's <laughs> it, honestly it's it's a very very subtle result sure um, so that's a big thing. And the other the other misconception is the other way where they think there's going to be no downtime at all. And a lot of that is to do with the marketing of threads in that the message is that it is less invasive than a surgical facelift. However, it's not the same as having Botox. You do need to allocate time in your diary for the few days after to sort of allow the marks in the face to go. So it's not a walk in, walk out and you go for a brunch or lunch after. You do need a few days because obviously you're inserting sutures stitches essentially into yeah. the face so they're the three things that I get asked about a lot no fascinating and just to talk a bit about actually the treatment recovery time yeah. if you've got any tips for improving this or shortening this time yeah we did actually an audit of outcome at Dr Leah Clinics for threads so we're a thread center I do majority of my practice now is doing threads and facial lifting treatments and I did an audit of all of our outcomes and we find that the most important variable in terms of how good your result from a thread lift is, is not the doctor who does it, which is a bit offensive to me, but anyway, <laughs> um, not how many threads you have, not what vector, so what position the threads put in. The most important thing is your adherence to the aftercare. So it's really important that once we place the stitches in the face, which is a straightforward procedure, I mean, I've done at this point thousands of them, I, I can put them in as good as any other person will ever be able to put threads in the face. But you need to then, it's essentially a stitch, it's a dissolvable stitch, and you need to then make sure that you have immobilized as much as, as is reasonable that area I often explain it the same as when you have a c-section the reason you're advised not to dry for six weeks is because when you break you're pulling against the suture and you can get wind hissing so the wind can open it's the same principle I'm essentially stitching your face into a lifted position and you need to minimize any activity such so as no running smiling no laughing minimal minimal <laughs> smiling minimal laughing sleep on your back sure um for five nights no running no horse horse riding and running are, are typical or renowned for being particularly bad for causing facial laxity facial sagging so you need to just make sure that you keep the face as much as you can in the position that it's essentially being being stitched which is what a thread lift is and it's not forever I say five days really really strict and then 10 days so the last five with reduced facial activity one aspect of the podcast which I really want to talk about is side effects. I feel like we should let the listener know about this. Are there any common side effects which people experience after this kind of treatment? Side effects is something that 
I'm really interested in. So I sit on the board for this treatment in the UK. So I see their complications in the UK and I sit on other medical boards for other various aesthetic treatments. I can tell you that this, Cydia Soft Threads, is the one that I see the least complications across the UK for. And the reason for that is it tends to be more experienced doctors who are performing Cydia Soft Threads and the clients who are, because it's quite a, it's quite an invasive procedure to perform. And the clients who have Ciliat soft threads tend to be clients who it's a more considered purchase. So you don't tend to go on Weitcher and buy a Ciliat soft thread lift at a discount price. So I see very, very few complications. And actually, as time goes on and threads are performed more and more interestingly, I'm actually seeing less complications in the UK in general. And I think that's because of the skill of the doctors that are performing it. But the main things that I do see, and it definitely can happen, is bruising. And I can tell you from my own practice, that is to do, that that cannot be completely evaded. So when I consent for threads, I say, I'm going to bruise you. Um, and if I don't, it's a bonus. How, how are you going to yeah. do <laughs> it's, um, it's You have to be honest. It's a blind procedure. So as much, don't get me wrong, the amount of bruising that I would cause now versus my first 100 cases, 200 cases are worlds apart. And <laughs> my apologies to my first 100 <laughs> thread lifts. But that is to do with the experience to some degree of your doctor. So you can minimize that with improved practice, but not completely. And you are still going to get a little bit of bruising normally. And you've got to prepare the client for that with the pre-care. So avoiding alcohol, avoiding blood thinners, getting them on arnica tablets. And also making sure that they know from a diary point of view, if you bruise, you don't have any massive plans. You're not getting married in a week. You're not mother of the bride in a week. We've got a good 10 day, 10 to 14 day window here. So, and bruising will always fade. So bruising is the one thing. The thing that clients get most concerned about, and you actually see it very, very rarely, is the appearance of the threads under the skin. So will someone see tracking is what we would call it, of the thread under the skin? And the answer is no. I mean, if you're seeing an experienced ciliate soft doctor they will know how to place the the threads in the skin at the right depth obviously there are clients who are increased risk of that if you've got very little um, body fat so very slim patients that sort of translucent irish skin celtic skin i would say <laughs> um then they're at increased risk but that doesn't mean they're not a candidate it means that your doctor needs to make sure that they're putting them that wee bit lower than maybe they would on someone who's got a sort of hypertrophic thick skin so yeah tracking patients get worried about don't be worried about that just pick a good doctor and you won't have that as a problem infection i've never seen and i put on antibiotic cream on my clients after a lot of the a lot of the thread lift doctors do and i will ask them to apply that at home for a few days that pretty much reduces or eradicates that risk and obviously going somewhere that is very hygienic so they should be cqc registered for ciliate soft thread lifts we have a center my of my three clinics we only perform threads at one which is my baker street clinic specifically set up for threads so infections the other thing i'm trying to think is there anything else the puckering that you get initially so the initial appearance where the face is pulled back you've got sort of dimples where the threads have been inserted that look like literally like a dimple so like an indent in the skin that takes normally a week to completely resolve and the puckering which is the pull of the face so initially i'll put the threads in tighter than what the end outcome would be with the view that your skin will lift as much as your own skin will and that'll vary person to person it's normally about a centimeter with each thread in whatever vector whatever direction we want to do the lift but worrying that that puckering or those dimples are going to last long term is a real source of anxiety for clients they can't they won't and the longest that I've ever seen a dimple or an indent in this I mean you can fill that out so I've had it don't get me wrong it can happen I've had no, clients I'm, I'm come back like, I quite like dimples <laughs> no, no not in the middle of your face so um <laughs> yeah so some patients do, but you don't want people asking, well, what's that? Have you mm. had it? What is that? It'll look like you've had a little mole removed normally. Okay. Um, that's how it'll look. And it can still be there. I've had clients come back, review it one week, still there. We've, we've, I've booked them in because it is quite the dimple still there to see them two weeks after that. So three weeks down the line, still there. And I've just had to pop it out with a bit of subcision. Um, so you just go in with a little needle. It takes a second and just release it. Or in the worst case scenario, if that doesn't work, a bit of dermal filler to pop it out. But again, an experienced red lift doctor is also an experienced cosmetic doctor and they'll be able to to sort that out for you so in terms of of complications bruising is the one you've got to prepare yourself for everything else is dependent on on your doctor picking a hygienic place and making sure that you follow the aftercare and that you're going to someone experienced to minimize your risk fantastic i mean that's good to hear that 
everything's quite slim chances. So you mentioned their Silhouette Soft and other ones as well. So just getting this right, is, is there a certain level to that? Is Silhouette Soft maybe viewed as something a bit more upmarket and the other threads on around as well that people can use? Yeah, I'm trained in all different types of threads and I do all different types of threads. I do predominantly Silhouette Soft when the client needs a lift because Silhouette Soft has the better lifting ability. So when you look at it versus other threads, the technology is such that it it is able to give a, a better sort of lifting effect. And certainly that's my experience of using different types of threads. So when the client wants mainly a lift then I will go down the route of Silhouette Soft. There are other types of threads, PDO threads is the other sort of big type of threads. They're easier to put in from an injector's point of view. They're easier to train in. They're, they tend to be more widely available for that reason and they make a different type of collagen. So they, I tend to think they give more of a plumping result than a lift. So there's definitely a market for that. If you have a very gaunt face, then a PDO thread lift is a good option. If you're a client who sort of doesn't really want to volumize, you just want to sort of lift the face essentially, then Silhouette Soft is, is what I would go for with you. You will get a collagen effect with Silhouette Soft at three months. So you will sort of see an improvement of the skin, etc. at that time. But it won't be such that you're going to see a big volumization of the face with, with Silhouette Soft in the way that you may do with some other threads or brands of threads. So yeah, more for, for a lift, Silhouette Soft is what I would go with. But with that, yes, you are moving into a different level of technique required for the insertion. So you need a more skilled doctor. And with that comes a normally a slightly higher price point. But, yeah. you know, if you're going to, when you compare it to things like surgical facelifts, then, you know, really it does provide provide good value. So, again, that's a very individual thing. And pricing is definitely something that I'm very, very open and honest and happy to discuss with clients well, um, because this is not a, a cheap treatment. It's not a sort of, you know, something that you should be, you should be, you know, sort of trying to get done on the cheap. My advice is that you really don't have it done versus have it done cheaply and cause yourself injury essentially by by having it done by someone who isn't skilled or experienced to, to do it. Which leaves me on perfectly. So thank you for that, for making my job easy. Talking about price. So can you please give me a ballpark figure for these treatments that you've, you've named so far, what people can expect to pay, but also just as well for having a facelift as well? Oh, it varies enormously. It really varies. It depends on your doctor and your geographical location. So I probably, well, one of the leading doctors, certainly one of the most experienced doctors in the UK for thread lifts, for Silhouette Soft thread lifts. So my pricing is, well, I think I'm reasonably reasonable, but you're still looking about £2,600 and the result will only last 18 months. So you do have to factor that in when you're working out if it's the right treatment for you versus a surgical facelift depends if you add in neck you're probably looking for a good lower face and neck lift with a good surgeon 10 to 15 thousand really again depends on the surgeon depends on the the location that should last you about five five to seven years providing he doesn't take too much away that you look like you've been in a wind tunnel mm -hmm. so the in terms of cost effectiveness it works out about the same it's actually not a cheaper alternative to plastic surgery or to, to surgical treatment because obviously you get longer so although plastic surgery or cosmetic surgery is more expensive up front you will get longer out of the treatment. What you want to be careful with with that is that you don't, you're not so focused on getting longer out of it that they take too much away to give you the 10 years out of it. And then you look like you've been in a wind tunnel for the first two years. So you're, you're the cost, it, it's about the same. I, I don't present it as a cheap alternative or a cheaper option. Certainly less capital outlay up front, less money up front, but over a seven, five to seven year period, it works out the same cost as a surgical facelift. And is that the same with PDO as well with? PDO thread lift, you're probably for full face and neck, you're probably looking by 1,200, 1,500. 
versus sort of a thousand pounds more for ciliate. So I've showed a look in 2,600, 2,800 if you want to do now. Got you. So essentially come in, see yourself, You'll be able to point everyone in the right direction about what they will need. <laughs> Absolutely. Fantastic. Ask the internet. Leah, the internet is a fantastic thing. And we decided that we could use this to look at some of the most common, frequently asked questions on the internet around this area. So I've just got a couple of them, which I hope you'll be able to provide the answers for straight away so people don't have to bother searching it. Sure. So you can't anti-aging cream replace lifting no <laughs> and i say that as someone who's formulating a skincare line but no it can't replace lifting because if you think of how you lift the face well first of all there are multiple things there are multiple layers associated with facial laxity with facial sagging so when someone wants something lifted it's because it is sagging and that comes from the from the bone upwards essentially so there are multiple things you're talking about reposition of facial tissue you're talking about muscle you're talking about the skin so there's various different levels and when you think about a topical cream it is topical in that you apply it to the surface of the face can i create a cream and are we formulating dr Lee a cream that will improve the appearance of your skin absolutely i can and i can include things like retinol i can can contain things like HA to hydrate the the epidermis the outer layer of the skin to turn over the epidermis so that you are getting a more rejuvenated appearance of the skin but trying to get those actives to penetrate you know down to a fiber blast level where they're going to be able so sorry deep level of the skin where they're going to activate collagen and elastin scientifically extremely challenging mm. so no i think lifting needs to be done to a deeper level when you think about a surgical facelift for example it's a smaz facelift often which is a sort of layer of tissue that is just above your bone ciliate soft done at subcutaneous depth so quite deep in the skin and that's where your lift comes from but there's definitely a role for creams and that role is to improve the overall appearance from the of the skin not necessarily lift so yeah, they can be used in combination, but they're not an alternative. Fantastic. And I know you've talked about bearing in mind when you're having this done that maybe take a couple of days off, put your feet up kind of thing. But a uh, question asked is, can you go on holiday after a thread lifting treatment? Yeah, you can. I would like you to remain in the UK for 72 hours after just from a complications point of view. So if anything's going to go wrong, and with any procedure, it's normally within 48 hours and you allow a day's grace with that in case the client doesn't present immediately. So, yes, you can, but I would ask you to remain contactable within the UK for 48 to 72 hours after. Then, yeah, you can fly. Your swelling will be mainly subsided by three days because obviously the thing with the increased pressure of a flight, for mm. example, if you are going away, is it might increase your swelling. And yeah, I mean, some people I'm sure do go away in order to not be, be seen for a few days so that they have time to recover. But yeah, stay around for a few days after and then then you're fine to go. You need to make sure you're not anywhere in direct sunlight, so not sunbathing on the face for a few weeks after. And I'd suggest probably no long haul flights just because the amount of facial mm. swell and you don't want to, you know, dramatically exacerbate that just a few days after having a procedure done. But yeah, sure, if you want to go to Spain somewhere in Europe, I think that's probably fine on day three. So no horse riding in Jamaica? No horse riding for two full weeks. <laughs> no problem. And I know that you mentioned this a bit as well, but I was just wondering if there's a limit to it. But can you have more than one threading treatment? Yeah, absolutely. The majority of my clients repeated 18 months. We have seven years worth of data. So you can have five thread lifts at the minute. And in seven years time, I'm sure we'll have then 14 years worth of data or we'll have a new amazing treatment. The other thing is to bear in mind, you probably will want to repeat. And I say the same with Botox before I perform Botox and everyone is like color in your hair. So anyone who is not naturally blonde, I, of course, wouldn't know. Um, we'll know how hard it is to go back to your original color once you've had blonde highlights. So I, yeah, I speak from experience when I can say that you will be likely to repeat things like Botox or Ciliate Soft, because when you go back to your original appearance 18 months later, you will, you'll want to go back to your thread lifted appearance. So yeah, absolutely. You can repeat and you probably will want to. 
Another one is, are you put to sleep when you have thread lifting treatment? Nope, you're awake throughout. Um, so you have a few injections, much like when you have a fill-in, although the injection isn't into the gum, it's into the face. So you'll feel numb. It's not like a dental block, we can't move the mouth, but your sensation on the face will be diminished just with local anesthetic. And yeah, you're awake throughout. I'll be chatting to you throughout. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you'll be, you'll leave just, just as you would if you went to the dentist and, and had a, a filling or a tooth extraction. To those who've tuned in, we hope you have learned about lifting and in particular thread lifting treatments. And of course, there's so much information, it's easy to forget the key takeaways before you book your consultation. So to combat this, Leah, I want to know your most important point or a couple of points that we have covered in this podcast, which people should take away with them at the end. Just some food for thought, basically. So please throw some at me. I think it's just really important that people know that thread lifts are available and they're an alternative way of lifting the face to something like, for example, dermal filler. Just because with dermal filler, in order to get the lift, you, you need to do so much in the mid face that you distort the look of the face, the anatomy of the face, and you start to look like a, a different person. So I just want women and men to know that thread lifts are available. They're a way that I can reposition the, the lower face. I can lift up without needing to plump out and mm. change actually how you look. So I can take you back to how you look sort of three, four years before without making you look like a, a completely different person. And I just think it's it's really important that that people do know that they're an option. So yeah, that's the most important thing. And the second thing is just make sure that you do your own research and that you make sure that you've seeked out a reputable doctor because it's so important that you can have an open and frank discussion with your practitioner to make sure that you are going down the, the right route of treatment and that they are right for you because they're not right for everyone. So you need to make sure that, that you've seeked out the, the right person to, to do your treatment and use the internet. It's mm. free. Um, do your own research wherever you live. Um, there will be someone if you need to travel then travel it's worth it it's an investment in you and even if it's just the consultation and they tell you actually no this isn't right for you or they suggest something else it's absolutely worth getting that that opinion by someone who who does this day in day out so number one no threads are available and also if you are going to go down the route of having cosmetic treatments thread lifts or otherwise please it doesn't have to be me but please seek out a reputable ethical cosmetic doctor Amazing. Well, you heard it here, guys. And thank you so much, Dr. Leah Tossin, for all of your advice and knowledge, which, you know, I've definitely found out a lot. So really appreciate having you along. Thank you. Thanks. And of course, thank you, the listener, for tuning into the podcast. We hope you have learned a lot about lifting in general, but also thread lifting treatments and that they are available and an option for you to take. This podcast is brought to you by Sinclair Pharma, leaders and innovators in the global aesthetic world. If you have any other questions or want more information on anything aesthetic, please head over to SinclairPharma.com. Join us next time as we explore more topics in the aesthetic industry. Au revoir from me, Connor Morin, and we'll see you soon. Goodbye.